market update here on the 30th. So we had a nice up move here on Friday. Well, we had a nice up move at the very beginning of the day. Nice gap up here, created a gap below, which ultimately was filled. So if you just knew that that gap was there, you could have bought puts up here, um, averaged into your position, knowing that we have a supply zone and a gap up here as well. And then if you just held on to those, you could have made really good money on this move down. Um, so we filled that gap. And from what I can see, I think that this was probably five waves off the top. Uh, I've been playing around with a few different scenarios. Again, it's a fourth wave. And with fourth waves, it's really um, difficult to pinpoint exactly the way it's going to go. You have to have different scenarios. So a few different ones that I came up with are basically... Something like this, where this is an A wave right here. We get the move down here into this demand zone, and then we make a move higher after that. That would be probably 1% or 2%, 1% down to the start of the week, maybe. That's the first possibility. Second possibility is... This actually looked good, but then it came a little bit too far. So I'm not sure if I like this one as much anymore. But that would just mean we go straight up from here, right into the gap fill. And then the third scenario is just the bearish one. And that is, this is the first wave down. And we just go ahead and come down here and complete the five waves down here to 347. So, uh, take your pick. Is it going to come down here and do a bear trap and then bounce back up here to fill the gap are we going to fill the gap early in the week or are we going to sell off and finish down here at 347 early in the week i actually think that i am favoring um, a bear trap early in the week meaning we get some kind of move like this early and then we we shoot up here um, later into the week it would be a pretty big fourth wave uh, this is about the 0.5 fib, but uh, from what these charts are showing, I still think there's going to be a pretty big move lower sometime in October, and I, I feel like everyone is pretty complacent with, oh, the correction's over with, uh, we're going to go to new all-time highs now. I see that everywhere on Twitter, I see that anywhere everybody's talking about this, everyone thinks the correction's done. Um, I don't think it is. I mean, for simple reasons, just looking at the length of wave A, normally, 9 times out of 10, you're going to come down here and at least hit the bottom of this same length of wave A. We're still, right now, about $10 off of that. So that's one reason. It's possible that it bottoms right here, but it's very, it's a lot less likely and I think it's even more likely it goes to the 1.61 fib than bottoming right here. So, for those reasons, I think that this is still a fourth wave. And while it's possible that we just come down here at 347 and then go to new highs, um, I think 347 is pretty much the minimum. I still think that this is a very, very high likelihood is that we get an extended fifth wave. So, I think that's a very high like, likelihood just based on the charts. So, I'll stick with that and we'll see what happens. The 50... The 50 uh, day moving average on the weekly is sitting here at... Uh, 3... or no, 320 right here. This might come up here closer. Probably not though. It probably... Maybe it'll come close to like 3.30 and that will be the um, target going forward. So uh, we'll see what happens from here. Those are kind of the scenarios I'm expecting early in the week though. And let's go over some of the individual charts now. Or actually, let's go over SPX SPY first.
So um, the difference between SPY, SPX, and QQQ is that on SPX, this is already hit. We've already came down here, so you can't use that as an argument for we're going to go lower. But the 1.61 fib has not hit. And that is sitting here at 416.7. And that would, would that invalidate this? That would invalidate this. If it came down here to the 1.61 fib, it would invalidate this being a five wave move. But I said before, um, there's a very good chance that this is actually a B wave. So we're looking at this like something like that. So um, on SPX, it would probably bounce similar to QQQ up here a little bit higher. I don't have any of the demand zones highlighted on this chart, but... There is a gap here at 440. I don't think that's going to hit right away. But maybe. Probably wouldn't get there if we bounce up here similar to QQQ. But if it gets up here to like 443.60, it can come all the way back down here to 416.3. And that's about a, what is that, like about a 5% correction from there. So... We'll see what happens a little bit different of a chart and do not discount the fact that this is outside the parallel line. If this is a fourth wave and we come down here to 416, you can be looking at um, a five wave move. I don't see why not. And then at that point, there's a potential to come down here and test the 4000 level. And JP Morgan has a caller, not saying that it's 100% accurate where it's going to go, but they have a caller that um, kind of supports something down here by the end of the year. So don't discount that move either. Microsoft, nice bounce off the low. I am personally thinking that this is probably going to come out here and fill the gap early on Monday. The gap is sitting here at... About 314, we're at 315.75, so that's like you know a half percent lower. And then I'm expecting this to more than likely come up here minimum to 325, but potentially all the way up here to like 328. So that would be a pretty good move after that. That would be about a 5% move from 314. And then, again, another reason why I talk about potential for a fifth wave extension on QQQ is because how are we going to get down here? To fill this gap down here without QQQ going to 332. So there's always the possibility that this ends up being ABC as well, though. So this could also be like that. And we come down here to 291 um, and fall short of this. But um, the gap's down there and the 50-day moving average in the weekly, a 50-weekly is down here as well. So maybe it is an ABC move. So ABC, ABC, and then we get an ABC move down here and it hits like 290 and holds that and then goes to new highs. So that gap fill is, can throw you off sometimes too. You're thinking, oh, it's going to go all the way to the gap fill, but maybe not. You have the 50 right here. The 20 is way up here. We're below that. So we should come down here to the 50. Tesla. So Tesla, nice bounce off the lows, right into demand. This is looking like five waves to me. Um, I think that, again, similar to Microsoft, my base case is that we get some kind of like lower move early in the week. 
and I don't have a demand zone. We're at 250 right now. Maybe down here and just into this demand zone right here, 244 to 246. And then from there, I'm expecting it to go up here still and fill that gap at 262. So something like that. And then similar to Microsoft, how are we going to get down from 260 to 186 um, without QQQ going to 332? So again, um, this also could be ABC as well, and only goes to 206. So keep an eye on that, but I'll be short for sure up in here at some point. This will be a supply zone as well. Should draw that up here. And yeah, so I'm looking for basically a small sell off at the start of the week, then a bounce up here, and then a sell off. Um, the big sell off. And who knows how long this will take to bounce up here? Probably a couple of days by the end of the week, I would say. 245 to 262. What is that like a. 5 6% gain going into the week. So Apple. Um, Apple's been pretty tricky. It didn't quite fill the gap here at 166.53. Here's one thing to keep in mind on Apple. Again, you just draw this line here. Takes us down to 165. That fills the gap. And then also... One sixty five. So I think that this is likely an ABC. This is a very extended ABC move. Uh, this is probably ABC. And then this is looking like it's ABC as well. So one sixty five is kind of the base case here. And that is, I don't know, two, three, four percent lower. So we'll see what happens after, there's a lot of mixed signals. So Apple 165, all these other ones are showing that they could go a lot more lower. So it's kind of tricky right now. Um, NVIDIA, and then NVIDIA, I think this is a fourth wave. As long as it doesn't cross into 448, then it should come down here and fill this gap at 395. So we have... Another one where it's 10% lower. We're at 435 right now, so maybe this goes a little bit higher into later in the week. Um, and then we sell off into the rest of October. Maybe this will be an extended, long, longer move in, in October. So we'll see what happens with that one. And then Amazon. Amazon had a pretty big correction already. So I'm not really expecting that much lower on this at all. I think it could actually bounce up here to like 130, maybe over this next week, and then sell off down here, maybe to the 1.61 fib at 121, and that'd be it. There is a gap though at 115, so if it goes from 130 to 115, that would be in line with Microsoft, Tesla. Um, Apple's got a gap at 157. So yeah, that's pretty much, what am I missing here? Google. Google's one of the easier ones to see. I really like this chart a lot because it makes me more confident that we are going to see another dip. So we have one, two, three, and I'm looking for 123 on this. Uh, 123. And another reason why is the very top, straight down. That is definitely an A wave. We're bouncing right now. Um, this bounce already filled the gap, hit demand. Um, at some point, we're going to see 123. One twenty-three. So that's about. I think that's like five or six percent lower. And so if you just take that on QQQ, five, six percent lower, that is like 343. 
but then again, a lot of these other ones are 10%, so you got to average it out. 332 seems likely to me. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. And I think Meta was the last one. Meta, I still, this chart, um, one thing I can point out about it without going into Elliott Wave too much, it does look like it probably has another move down as well. There is a small gap down here. It did just finish below the 20 day on Friday, barely. So that is definitely bearish. Weekly, though, it is above it, I think. Yeah, it's above it on the weekly, though. So um, it's a tough one to call. It looks to me like a corrective move right here, and it looks like it should come down here. Um, especially when you look at all the green weeks we had. It would make sense for it to come down here one more time. Um, but I'm not going to go into it too much because meta, like the waves are not really working out for me when I look at them. So on the weekly, you can see we have the 20 here. The 50 is right around 240. And the 50 on the weekly is around 211. So honestly, this needs to hold 290. And we're at 300 right now. We'll see what happens going forward. It doesn't look like a impulse move to me. Not at all. So I would lean towards the downside, but that's a very corrective move. But we'll see what happens. The dollar. The dollar just keeps on going higher, and the only thing really to look at is what I've been looking at in the last couple of videos. The targets are 105.82. We already broke that. Next one's 107.38, and on the high side, 109.96. Um, on the waves, it's not very good on the daily. And on the weekly, just green waves, likely a C wave, A, B, C. So really, just look for what I pointed out, 107 to 109 potentially into the end of October. And then we should start falling down here to the target of 93. The VIX, I'm just looking to see if there's any gaps on this, which there are no gaps to the downside, which is a good thing if, well, it's not a good thing, but it's we're not going to dip as, as likely. So I would expect this to go higher into October. And if you think about it too, if we're gonna go to a new all-time highs like everybody's talking about, you're gonna want the VIX to be at like 30, high 20s, so they can just slowly unwind as we move higher. Right here, we're at 17.51. We can be back to 12 in like a couple weeks. And that's not enough time to get to all-time highs. So I think that it's likely we're going to get something like this into the end of October. And then again, if you look at like gross stocks, and I'll take a look at IWM. If you look at gross stocks, a lot of them are not bottomed yet. So we have um, wave A right here. Then we get a five wave move A. Move down, this is A of B. And then this looks to me like ABC right here. So A, ABC, B. And then we should be making the C wave down right now. So look at where all those stocks were at in October of 2022. That's the level that this is projecting to go to. So one sixty, we're at one seventy six. That's about a 10% move lower on IWM. So that just shows you right there. That would complete the overall B wave. And then we would get 
a move back up to 200. So then if we hit 160 at the end of October, maybe November, then you're looking at a 25% gain um, from here, probably into the spring. And then you're looking at this like A, B, and then we're going to sell off hard. So we're almost there. Wait till probably end of October and you're going to see the bottom in all these stocks for the next like six months, especially in growth. But uh, we're not there yet. So anyway, that's it for this video. A lot of mixed signals in the market, but I do expect um, lower probably starting in the next couple of weeks. Maybe this week we get a small bear trap and a bounce and then go lower uh, maybe into mid-October. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe if you're not already. Talk to you in the next video.